For the first time in my life, Americans are concerned about not being able to take a test. If only this problem were around during finals week. That's right, across the board from tests to face masks, medical supply shortages have consumers alarmed. It's gotten so bad distilleries have shifted production towards hand sanitizer. Hold on, you're telling me I'm quarantined in an apartment with my girlfriend for over a month and you just got off hard liquor? My god, this is an emergency. Phew, New York liquor stores are classified as essential businesses. Sounds about right. Crisis averted. Of course, the supply problem is largely because most of America's medical supplies are made in China. So we have to wait in line next to every other country to see what they'll sell us. An article posted last week by the state news agency Xinhua argued that the world should thank China rather than blame it for spreading the virus, saying that if China banned the export of drugs, the United States would sink into the hell of a novel coronavirus epidemic. Now my goal today isn't to just complain about this medical supply problem. Ah, but that would be so much fun. But rather to go over four proposed policy solutions. Introducing export restrictions, reducing or eliminating tariffs, revising import procedures, and prioritizing domestic production. So let's get right into this and take it from the top. Introducing export restrictions. Now these measures have notably been implemented in the European Union. We need to keep in the EU the protective equipment that we need. This is why we adopted today an export authorization scheme for protective equipment. This means that such medical goods can only be exported to non-EU countries with the explicit authorization of the EU governments. That's right, the European Union introduced export authorization measures that prohibit the export of personal protective equipment, like masks, protective glasses, and garments from the EU without prior regulatory approval. Oh man, I bet Britain wished they had dragged their feet for just a little bit longer on that whole successfully brexiting thing right about now. Similarly, India restricted exports of 26 pharmaceutical components as well as medicines and vitamins made from them, accounting for about 10% of their pharmaceutical exports. So far, America has been openly hostile to the idea of export restrictions on medical supplies. Basically, alright, forget the last three years of open hostility to free trade, let's make it happen. We can all work together as a global community to make sure America has enough masks and tests. America first. Now to the second proposed option, reducing or eliminating tariffs. This strategy is already being quietly implemented in America with new exclusions from import tariffs for some medical products imported from China, including face masks, stethoscope covers, and blood pressure cuff sleeves. The Trump administration's tariffs on China are making it more difficult for U.S. healthcare providers to stock up on the crucial medical equipment they need. During the U.S.-China trade war, the Trump administration placed tariffs on around $4.4 billion worth of medical gear. After the pandemic started, the administration lifted some of those tariffs for certain companies importing that equipment. But those exemptions will expire later this year and don't cover all of the medical gear imported from China. If you can't beat them, get the best possible price out of them. We're back to trying to be China's best customer for medical supplies, because old habits die hard. With the removal of these tariffs, medical supplies we're running low on that we import should regain their affordable price status. Now to the next strategy on this list, revising import procedures. Now this solution might sound complicated and boring, but never fear because it's actually simple and boring. The basic idea is countries are pretty strict when it comes to regulations on their medical device imports. And I don't blame them. If I'm going to strap a piece of cloth to my mouth for several hours, I'd prefer that cloth be clean. The goal here is to say, alright, we're going to keep up the rigorous examinations of medical goods. But we need to create a fast lane so that medical devices get priority testing over the RoboTwist hands-free jar opener. Hmm, as seen on TV, 
and now a YouTube channel as well. These vast lanes are referred to as green lane systems and exist in China and the EU. So far America has not proposed a system for prioritizing medical instruments in our import process, although we could do so without having to work with Congress, so that shaves about a year and a half off the timeline. Now to the final and most talked about solution, prioritizing domestic production. Here is President Trump treading water trying to explain our domestic production strategy. We will be invoking the Defense Production Act just in case we need it. In other words, I think you all know what it is and it can do a lot of good things if we need it and we will, uh, we will have it uh, all uh, completed, signing it in just a little while right after I'm finished with this. Well, I don't think I have to add very much to that video. He summed it up so perfectly. Definitely seemed like he knew what he was talking about. Now this act does a few things. First, this act permits the president or agency to whom he delegates responsibility to require that certain contracts or orders take priority over others. This means that if a mask making company gets an order for paper shredders and face masks, the government can say, eh, prioritize the face masks. With this administration's track record though, might want to hold on to a few paper shredders. Taken to the logical extreme though, this means that the government can approach every medical company and say, we're ordering all the face masks you can make and you have to prioritize that order. Moreover, the law gives the federal government the power to decide how many scarce materials of national security importance are distributed. For example, during a war it could use that power to steer steel towards a tank factory over an automobile factory. Basically, I have a feeling that certain senators probably put all their money in the mask making companies last week. The last power the president now has access to is he can guarantee loans to help companies develop new production capabilities of goods relevant to the crisis. The government can also procure and install equipment in factories, including privately owned ones. So it seems like soon, the nation's production of medical devices could very quickly be mobilized in a major way by the federal government. So these are the four potential solutions to our medical supply shortage problem. Introducing export restrictions, reducing or eliminating tariffs, revising import procedures, and prioritizing domestic production. Although like all multiple choice tests, the correct answer is probably going to be E, all of the above. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, first a hot tip for all of you not yet quarantined. Do your laundry first. I'm already getting down to my button downs that I've never recorded in. I look like I'm dressed for an Easter celebration. Beyond that, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent and nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.